These pajamas make me feel so expensive and they're not. Like, I mean, first of all, they're free for me because it's a brand deal for my other channel, but like, I feel so like luxurious and expensive. Like I just like killed my husband and inherited a lot of money that he left in the will and spent it all on pajamas and I just feel really good. Anyways, so today I'm wearing pajamas, not because I'm about to go to bed. It's actually like 2 p.m. I just put these pajamas on for the video because I need to show them off. I feel like they need to be seen. Today's video, I'm talking about how to sleep when you are depressed. I mean, you don't have to be depressed for these to work for you and to help you sleep, but I will say when you're depressed, it's a lot harder to sleep and this makes it easier. Personally, I have a lot of sleeping issues. My dad does too, I think I got it from him. It takes me a long time to fall asleep every night. I toss and turn. Some months I don't sleep at all for like days. Like I'll sleep like two hours a night and I feel refreshed. Me, I need six hours. Six hours is like fully functional Ashley. Eight hours, too much for me. Four hours, I'm cool. Zero hours, I can function okay, but Anyways, yeah, like I've had my fair share of sleeping issues, so I feel like I should share the wealth and put you on to how I help myself sleep. I've been sleeping for like the past three months. Like I've actually been sleeping like six hours a night and it feels good, it feels really good. So yeah, I was like depending on coffee and when I didn't have my coffee, I would get really bad headaches and I just don't want anyone to go through that. So I'm gonna tell you guys how I sleep and how you can sleep too. And at one point I was very, very depressed and this is the only thing that got me through my nights. Okay, the first thing is that I actually learned that green light in your room promotes sleep. If there's any light you're gonna have on, see if you can find a way to make it green. Personally, me, I have smart lights, so I can just be like, hey Google, turn my lights green, and she'll do just that. When it's dark, if you're gonna have a light, make it green, and if not, dim it. Don't do bright light, don't do pitch black until you're ready. Another thing that I do, is when I know I'm going to bed in like an hour, then I'll start playing um, like these binaural sound waves on YouTube. I have a TV in my room, so I use the TV and I put like the sleep promoting frequencies and I have that playing at low volume just so that my brain starts getting tricked into wanting to go to sleep because it does have actual sound waves that trigger something in your brain. I don't really know the science behind it. All I know is that it does help. And I don't like noise when I sleep, so I can't play it while I'm trying to sleep. So I usually do it about an hour before if I've been having a hard time sleeping that week. Another thing you need to do is you need to stop eating right before bed. I know it's hard. I love snacking at night. I love ordering random burgers at night. I know that's bad. I don't do it all the time. I don't really do it as much anymore. But if you are gonna eat, have something light. Like have fruits, have chips, have a little wrap with egg, have pancakes, like, have light, airy foods. Don't be doing steak. Like the other night, I freaking made a whole beef with broccoli, mushroom concoction, and rice. And I had that at like 11.30 at night. I'll have salmon at night. I don't know what's wrong with me. Don't do what I do because your body is overworking itself to digest it because you're not even active. You're lying down trying to sleep. So your body is just constantly moving to digest your food and you don't sleep. And on top of that, if you're like me, Maybe you'll get weird dreams. When I have red meat before bedtime, I have really bad dreams. If I sleep on my back, I have bad dreams, I don't know. So try not to eat before bed. If you can avoid that, do it. But if you do it, be mindful of what you're eating, have a smoothie. And obviously with that goes, no caffeine. I know it feels like teas don't have caffeine. If you're having like black tea or jasmine tea or green tea, they have caffeine. In fact, green tea has some of the most caffeine, close to a cup of coffee. Don't be having coffee, none of that stuff. I have teas, yes. Um, but I do the ones that are like herbal teas. I don't have black teas anymore before bed, even though I love to, but I don't. So some teas that actually promote sleeping, I'll read them out to you, I don't remember. The ones that I do, I have chamomile tea, lavender tea, and decaf green tea. I also have a sleepy tea. I don't know what's in it, but it's nice. I'll put a screenshot of the one I use here, and it's like a medicinal sleepy tea. You can also try valerian root and lemon balm tea. Never tried those, but I hear good things about them. And of course, if you're a beige and you're comfortable, CBD works wonders. CBD gummies, CBD oil, CBD anything. You can buy CBD anything. I love it, I love it. It's just so expensive. So I only ever have it when it's like a sponsored brand deal. If not, I don't buy it because it's so expensive. It's like $200 sometimes. The dispensaries, I hear you can buy it as well, but um, 
Yeah, I like CBD, but I stick to like natural teas mostly. Okay, this is something that really helps me. Lavender oil. I put it on my body. I put it on like my um, what it, pulse points, I think they're called. So I put it like here, here, and I put it around my nose so I can smell it. Lavender oil does help. Lavender anything helps. That's why I have the lavender tea. And I put the lavender oil in my diffuser as well. So that's really nice. But one thing that I really love is a blend of lavender and eucalyptus. And I sometimes shower at night. Not all the time, but when I do, I do this. Also, if you're a night showerer, do this. When you're showering, A, use warm water. It relaxes your body. But I drop a couple droplets of oil, of essential oils, in my bathroom. So, not my bathroom, in my bathtub. So that the steam rises up and brings the scent of eucalyptus and lavender through the steam. And I smell it while I'm showering and I start to relax and feel good. So, you know that feeling after you take a hot shower and all you want to do is lie in your bed for three hours? Do it before bed so that you lie in your bed for eight hours and you get a good night's sleep and try the essential oil thing it actually works wonders so something that really helps is something that a lot of you might not be able to do but it is limit your screen time as you get closer to bedtime i know it's fun to scroll through tiktok all night long and then turn off your phone and go to bed but then when you turn off your phone and go to bed you wonder why am i up for an hour screen time is not good for sleepy time it's not some people that can sleep whenever it's fine it's fine. Me? I can't always do it. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. So when I'm going through my sleepless episodes that last like two to three months at a time, what I do is I try and work on a mindless hobby before bed that I know is going to tire my eyes out. So for example, this could be something like what I do, coloring. I use a coloring book and I just color in. My mind is not running, it's not focusing really, it's just doing something very mindless. My eyes get tired and I'll go to bed. You can read. What I don't suggest though is like writing or scrolling on your phone or doing anything that's too excessive like cooking even if it's for the next day. Like try and do little mindless hobbies like knitting. If you sew maybe you could sew something small. Um, more hands on than mental if anything. Maybe scrapbook or do puzzles those are some other good ones. Okay this is something that helps me so much and it's so weird. If you're like me and you toss and turn for hours and you're trying to sleep and you fucking can't, first of all, it's so miserable, it's the worst. These are the things that I do and guaranteed, I always come back and fall asleep after. The first thing I do is I get out of bed. Yes, even if it's 3 a.m., 4 a.m., I get up physically and I open my window a crack. Then I walk around my room for a second, I'm half asleep, I'm super tired, I don't turn the lights on, I just keep them off. I go to the kitchen, I go in the dark, I drink a glass of water, a really cold glass of water, and I just like drink it, like my life depends on it because it tastes so good at 4 a.m. for some reason, so I drink the whole glass of water. Then I come back and I fall asleep. I don't know why, just walking around, opening the window and getting water makes me fall asleep. If that doesn't work for some reason, if I normally sleep on this side, I will take my pillows and I'll sleep on that side. I don't know what it is, but flipping to the other side of the bed puts me to sleep. If you wake up, you'll be very confused. I'm not gonna lie, you're gonna be like, what the fuck, why is my body facing this wall? It's weird, it's weird, because you're not used to it. But something about flipping over, I fall asleep and I don't know why. It's so weird, it's so weird, but it works, so try it. Lastly, sleep hypnosis. Michael Seeley on YouTube, look him up. I'll write his name on the screen. Sleep hypnosis will do wonders. And it's okay if you forget what he's saying and you're not paying attention. Your subconscious, it's feeding through your brain and into your subconscious mind, so it's okay. That's putting you to sleep. You don't feel scared. You don't feel like you're in some crazy trance that you can't get out of. Hypnosis is actually very chill and you can stop at any moment you want. Like it's very, very chill. It's not like you're having some bad acid trip that you can't get out of it. It's literally, it's your own mind that's in control. So if you're scared of hypnosis, don't be. I used to be, and I mean, I've never been hypnotized in person, but YouTube ones, they do work, and they do. And um, it's very interesting. It is so interesting. So yeah, Michael Seeley on YouTube has a lot of sleep hypnosis videos that I suggest you guys try out if you're having issues. And if all the things on the list don't work, this is probably the one to work. So you won't remember what he's saying. You don't, you won't know when you fell asleep. All I know is that you'll probably wake up in the morning and be like, oh, oh yeah, that worked, huh? I don't use AirPods because I don't like to lose them. You can put them in your earphones 
or you can put it out loud on the TV. It works better in earphones, but um, TV will work too. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed staring at me in my luxurious, expensive $10,000 pajamas. Um, if you did enjoy this video, let me know and give it a thumbs up, all that stuff, and give me your best sleep tips because on some nights, I'm not gonna lie, like nothing works for me. I I would I would consider myself an insomniac. I've never been diagnosed, but honestly, with the way my sleep is set up, I it's bad. I'm I'm also a light sleeper. I'm also a very light sleeper. I remember a couple weeks ago, my sister was over and she whispered my name. She was like Ashley, and I was like yeah. Like right away, I woke up and I was just like alert. I'm like, yeah. If she tells me something, I'm like, oh, no way. And then I went back to sleep. I'm a very light sleeper. So even if I finally fall asleep, the slightest thing could wake me up and I'll start all over again. And then I can't sleep. It's so bad. It's so bad. But um, yeah, so share your best tips so that when these don't work for me, I can refer to them. And if this helped you, let me know. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.